Larry, why are you running? Do you really intend to be an MP? I do. I have been. I know what the job involves. And I, I'm serious about being the independent elected representative here. This is not just a, a promotion for the uh, mayoral elections next year? No. Oh, if I had to choose between jobs, I'd rather be in Wellington. Um, but um, no, it's not a promotional thing. It is, it, even if I don't win, I am wanting to influence the election result by getting something for Taranga. So what life experiences have you had that would make you a good MP? Well, uh, I have been an MP already, and really with, with both central and local government experience, those are the things I think make good preparation again for me to go back to Wellington. Prior to all of that, I had experience running a very large volunteer uh, organisation overseas, four, 400 volunteer staff in the Philippines, an uh, organisation called Youth with a Mission. We did a lot of work amongst poor communities and things like that. So I'm, I'm pretty adaptable and I learn things fast uh, and I like to get things done. I like to change things, really. Not for the sake of change alone, one assumes? No, I always, you know, I think I'm always motivated by seeing how it could be better and thinking things through to know how to get there. So what are the big issues in Tauranga that could be made better? Well, roading, of course, is the number one. And when I say roading, I mean a transport network. Obviously, it involves cycleways and bus lanes and so on. But most of our people are moving around the city in cars, and freight is moving through the city to the port in trucks and so on. And we have the rail line as well, which is going to be over capacity, uh, have over capacity soon. So what are the solutions? Well, it's already just about all planned. Business cases have been done on most of the, the um, roading requirements, transport requirements. The biggest one is State Highway 29 coming over the Kaimo and through Taurico and then down through State Highway 29A. That needs to be four-laned. And then it depends on where, you, where your housing is going to go. Right now, we've got land out there at Taurico which can house 3,000 houses, but we can't start it, the, the developers can't do anything because we're not allowed access to the state highway that goes right past it. But there are other solutions for where to build those houses, for instance? No, there aren't. Uh, uh, more uh, dense housing in, in the well, central city? Yeah, and that's, that's why we have all this work going on in Cameron Road, to create a corridor, a transport corridor, and then allow density along the, the side of it. But you can't just go dense everywhere. You know, it's, there are limits to anything. That's part of the issue too. You do have to have more intensification. The youth crime is in the news a lot at the moment. What, what would you do? Yeah, it's, it's a very complicated thing. Um, it's not rising here. You know, we're seeing, we're seeing youth um, rebellious activity and stuff and ma mostly related to drugs or alcohol and so on. But, you know, when we see the news and we see the ram raids in Auckland and Hamilton and so on, people are nervous here about when's that going to start here. And it does seem that we have a generation of young people who are growing up, not all of them, but growing up with less respect for authority. And you can't pin it down to one thing. Um, it's, it's complicated, families are breaking down, parents need help, um, but the job of parenting, I think, has, has become much more challenging. People are having to work two jobs and so on, and so all of that flows into children not really getting uh, the oversight, the training, the, the love and care. It's always a combination of all of that. And some of them are really heading off to do, I mean, some of these ram raids are not to make money. They're doing it for kicks. And they're doing it just to sort of kick back at the world because they're angry, you know. And all of that is sad. But it's very hard for a government to deal with because the governments are terrible parents, you know. What do you actually think the solutions are? Well, for most bad behaviour, you've got to have consequences and you have to have also help and support to help people change the way they are going to behave. So it's a combination of a lot of things. I, I think we've been a bit slack on the, on the consequences and I'm pleased that the police are getting more 
active in dealing with the gangs. I mean, you know, it's insane that we have gangs operating, have operated with almost impunity, and they're running all the drug trade and so on and making lots of money. So it's getting tougher on that is important. Then what do you do with the people that you are putting in jail is another matter. There are some good programs and some people come out of jail transformed and ready to contribute to society, which is a good thing. So there's lots of things you've got to do, um, but we must do what we can. The cost of living is affecting everybody. Uh, what tangible things do you think a government can do to address it? Well, dealing with the supermarkets is a good start. You know, we've waited a long time. We know they've been, been creaming too much off it. Um, and so hopefully some of the things they're doing now will work. Um, I think we're seeing wages rise too. We, we, we're not getting very good wages at the lower end of the socioeconomic sort of sphere. Um, people having to work two jobs is, is you know, bad for everybody. Rents, housing, first home stuff. I think, you know, in the old, like 30, well, not 30, 40, 40, 50 years ago, we had some of the highest home ownership rates in the world. And one of the reasons was that you had state advances loans, you got a loan that was fixed interest for 30 years, and you moved in and bought your house, and you stayed there for a while. Staying in a house for a long time is a good thing because your kids grow up in the neighbourhood, you go to the same school, and all that's very beneficial. And when we went to you know, commercial rates and you get a loan and then next year your interest rates have gone up, it's, it's made it too risky. And we have too often into situations we are now where the interest rates are high and people are having to sell, you know. It's, it's a surprise to me, really. In America, you still get a 30-year fixed home loan. It's incredible. Um, and I think that's something the government does need to seriously look at. Now, I'm not going down there with a party and all the rest of it, you know, but I'll go down with ideas. I'm primarily going down with the things that will relate specific, specifically to Tauranga. And I should say Tauranga. I keep saying Tauranga. You know, I grew up here and how do I change it? But I try. Tauranga. It's Tauranga. I think yeah. it is. I know. I know. I know all about it. I know what to think about. But it just doesn't come out sometimes. But So if you were uh, elected and an independent, it's a, a very unusual thing to have an independent MP in New Zealand. It is. Uh, what would that look like? Well, it is unusual, and it's one of the weaknesses of our democracy, really, because it would be good if there were a few more independents in the parliament. Um, the parties dominate their MPs far too much, and, you know, you can't cross the floor in a party in New Zealand without getting booted out, whereas overseas, you see, you see in England, you know, the backbenchers, they'll vote against this and that and stuff. We have a very tight system, and it's not, it's not really good. Most electorate MPs do not get the freedom to represent their electorates when they're in a bigger party. So um, I think that's, I hope I can break through that barrier and see that it can be done. It's very difficult if you've not had any parliamentary experience already because people think, you know, what are you gonna, it's just gonna take three years to learn. Trouble with many parties is that their electorate MPs are going to spend three years in the back bench too. And they don't get much opportunity. They make a few speeches. I've looked at Hansard and what, what our current um, member, you know, he speaks on a few bills because they're on his select committee, but he doesn't get to make a general debate or ask questions at question time. I will be able to do that. I will have allocated times and I can make sure I put Tauranga, you know, on the map. And here's the interesting thing. This is going to be a tight election. And it is possible, although, you know, way out there maybe, but it may come down to one seat. And if it did, you know, Tauranga would benefit greatly. They won't get that from their National Party or Labour Party uh, electorate MP, you know. And I think it's worth a shot.